So for the first time in a while now, I've got a three day weekend. We are gonna do our best to try not to let that go to waste. So if you're new to the channel, my name is Mike. We run a small farm here on five acres and I've constantly got some kind of project going on, which is exactly what we're gonna dive into today. So on the back of my tractor here, I've got a three point ballast box that I just purchased. It's completely empty at the moment. I wanna go ahead and get some weight in that thing and I wanna set it up to where I can carry some tools and different things on me. Let's go ahead and dive into my specs and what my plan is here. And then we'll go ahead and get this thing built and we'll show you the finished product. I think this is gonna be a little different than a lot of the ones you've seen already on the internet. So if you're not familiar with one of these ballast boxes, these are the ones that you can pick up on Amazon for usually a couple hundred bucks, depending on what price they are at the time that you go looking for it, which is exactly what I did. I went ahead and picked one of these up. It was on sale at the time for a couple hundred dollars. So I went ahead and snagged it up while the price was good. Now I bought this a couple weeks ago and just put it on the back of the tractor just to kind of get used to having it on here. And during that time I was looking around trying to figure out different ideas on how I wanted to set this thing up, why I want it to be a counterweight for my tractor. I also want it to be have some functionality to it as well and be able to carry some tools out in the pasture with me. And while there's a ton of different ideas out there, I couldn't quite find the idea that I was looking for. So after a lot of brainstorming and a whole lot of thought, let me go ahead and run you through my plan here real fast. Then we'll go ahead and get working on this thing and I'll show you what it looks like. So the main thing I wanted to be able to do when I got this was to be able to actually use this access door for storage instead of just completely closing it off and it not being functional at all. So I think I've got a pretty good plan in place, but I also knew that by making a cavity right there and putting concrete around it, I was gonna have to build some kind of box and I was gonna sacrifice some of the weight that the concrete would have taken up in that space. So that immediately led me to looking at different ways I can make this thing still heavier. The obvious choice that I was able to find was adding some lead to the box. Well, after my search for trying to find lead, I couldn't really find much. So I, go, I went looking to see what else I could find. Now let me go ahead and grab my phone here real quick. I wanna run over some specs with you and how I came to the weight determinations that I'm gonna have on this box. So according to Kubota and the information I could find online, my tractor requires around 1,500 pounds of ballast weight to be able to effectively counterweight the, the loader that's on this tractor, which is capable of lifting around 2,400 pounds. So to get to that 1,500 pound mark, I already have liquid ballast in the tires. And since I bought this tractor and that was already installed in those tires, I don't know the exact weight of what that added. But I'm going to guess it's a little bit on the low side just based on some work I've had done to the tractor in the past. So I'm gonna say that's around 800 to 900 pounds that's already in the rear ballast of this tractor. Now right now, with no ballast weight on the back at all and just the tires filled, I usually find my braking point to be somewhere around 2,000 to 2,100 pounds before I start lifting tires off the ground. When I bring home pallets full of feed, I'm usually in that 2,000 to 2,400 pound range, which makes it an extremely sketchy situation when I'm trying to get that out of my trailer and put over in my garage. Now you start talking about material and how much density it takes up. Concrete is somewhere around two and a half grams per cubic centimeter. Now when you start looking at other materials and how much density they have, steel is somewhere around 7.85 grams per cubic centimeter. Lead was quite a bit more than that. But since I couldn't find lead, steel is going to be the example that I use in my box. So the next step in this build was to find the material that I was gonna be able to use. And when I went out looking, I was mainly just looking for small scraps of thick chunks that I could use to add weight to this because steel is around three times heavier than concrete. And that was gonna help me kind of make up for the voids that I was gonna leave in the box since I'm not gonna be filling this thing all the way up to the top with concrete. My local scrap yard came in clutch. And I found the perfect material to use for this. What I was able to find was these inch and a half thick plates that weigh roughly 28 pounds a piece. And not only that, I was able to get these at a hell of a deal. They sold them to me for next to nothing because they'd been there for so long. So I ended up picking up 19 of those just to have on me. I'm gonna use some of these weights for my truck when I plow in the winter for counterweight, but I've actually got another use for these as well, which I'll show you at the end of the video. So basically the concept I came up with was being able to take nine of those. I'm gonna stack three of them in here across to make a wall and then put a little lid on top of it. I'll weld those all in place. That's gonna make the walls for this box to be able to make that a storage compartment. And then I can just basically encase that in concrete when I'm done. Now, the next thing I wanted to be able to do was not have the concrete all the way up to the top because I want to be able to put stuff up here as well when I'm driving around as an extra storage space. I don't know exactly how far down I'm going to go yet with this box because basically what I'm trying to shoot for is somewhere around the 600 pound mark. And the reason I chose 600 pounds is because while I'm still trying to keep in mind that I want 1500 pounds max total, the weight capacity on this box is rated at 800 pounds. And I wanted to leave myself a little bit of room because this has a two inch receiver in the front and I want to be able to still tow some of my trailers around. That gives me a little bit of wiggle room while I'm towing trailers when I've got tongue weight on this to be able to get up to the 800 pound mark. Now the other thing I'm going to do too, take a section of this two inch PVC pipe and I'm going to come over here in the corners on this side as well and I'm going to add a few more slots so I've got room for different yard tools and equipment that I could stash down in here. Now the reason I'm wanting to leave this box right here open is because I figured out through trial and error that I had a couple of these little compact pack out kits like this and when you open this door, while it doesn't fit in there perfectly, I am able to wiggle this thing in just like this 
and store that right there in that place. And that's gonna be a perfect place for me to store a lot of little odds and ends, small pieces and parts that I may need for my tractor. Or if I'm out working in my field, I could keep all the little parts that it takes to maintain my fence or various garden hose fittings, things that I always seem to need but never have with me. And then I gotta make a trip back up to the shop to get those things. So I'm hoping by having this pack out right here in that box and being able to store a couple other things in there as well, I'll have everything right here ready to go every time I go out in the field and take care of any chores or tasks that I have for the day. Now I did go ahead and purchase a little scale that I can hook up to the bucket of the tractor that's capable of lifting 2,200 pounds. So I'm gonna try my best to weigh this box as I go and see if I can get this thing as close to the final weight as I want. So with that being said, that's my game plan. Let's go ahead and dive into this thing and see if I can actually get this thing to turn out the way that I got it envisioned in my head right now. Okay, so here's the next step in my master plan here. So I got these plates in here. I went ahead and welded these and painted them off camera. So as you can see, I took three of those plates, I welded them together and <clears throat> did the best I could because my welder's not really rated for material this thick, but it should serve its purpose because I'm not looking for it to be structural here. So essentially I formed two walls on each side. I've got another piece three wide that I'm gonna put on the top as a roof. But now you can kind of see what my plan was here. So I can use this access door to slide that in, bring that in like so, and then that could store right in there. And then there's still room on top as well to store any, anything else I want to put in there. The next step is to get the top on here. I'll get it tacked in place and then we'll start mixing some concrete up and I'll go ahead and fill in the voids on each side and I'll put a layer over the top, see how many bags that gets me. We'll weigh this dude and we'll see how heavy we got it so far. This is only taking me about 30 minutes to get to this point. I went ahead and put my top plates on like I said I was gonna do. I just tacked those in place on each side. That should keep everything nice and sturdy and in place as far as I could tell. Especially once I get the concrete around it, I can't see this going anywhere. I looked and looked all over the shop. I couldn't find any kind of silicone or caulk that I had laying around. So the next best thing I could come up with was painter's tape. And I just basically wanna to try to keep concrete out of the box that I formed. I'm not sure if that's right or wrong or not, if it's gonna cause me any problems. I'm sure a lot of you will probably let me know in the comments if this was a bad idea, but by then it'll be too late. So this is the way it's gonna be. But that's just basically, like I say, keep concrete and water out of the inside box is my hope. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing off the tractor, turn the tractor around. I wanna try out my new toy I got. I got a scale that goes on the front of the bucket. I wanna weigh this thing periodically as I start putting concrete in it, just to see if I can try to hit that target weight of around 600 pounds that I'm shooting for. But with that being said, let's get this thing set up, start mixing some concrete. Okay, we are all done, concrete is in. It's been setting up for just about an hour or so now. I've got this thing on the scale and we are right at 610 and a half pounds right now. So that is basically right exactly what I wanted to be, just a tad over, but I can handle that, no problem. The nice thing is I've still got a decent amount of space here in the bottom where I could store, you know, random tools or anything I might want to take out the pasture with me. And then down here at the bottom, I've got my cavity just like I wanted. It did have a little bit of water seep through, nothing too crazy. I was able to wipe it out paper towels. I think the water's done seeping in now. This thing can pretty much turned out exactly how I envisioned it, to be honest. I'll leave a link to this little scale where I got it as well. That thing is gonna be extremely handy to have around here on the farm, I think. It's something I've always wanted, and I figured this is the perfect project to pick this thing up and go ahead and make the investment. All there's left to do now is let this thing cure up. I'm gonna let this thing sit overnight. We'll get it hooked back up to the tractor, and then I've got a feed run coming up here in the next couple days. We'll get this video finished out, and I'll show you the kind of before and after on this tractor and why this counterweight's so important. Okay, so it's a few days later. I was able to get my dad to run over and grab feed for me today while I was at work, so that saved me a little bit of time. I would choose the day that's like the hottest day of the freaking summer, but that's okay. We'll sweat through this, get the footage, and get this video over with. So what I wanted to do real quick was show you what this thing looked like with just the tractor and no ballast when I was trying to pick up a skid. The back skid on the trailer right now is right at 40 bags, so it should be exactly 2,000 pounds. I try not to go over that, but like I said earlier in the video, that's kind of where my tipping point is. Most of the time what I would do is I'd down stack five or 10 bags, get this thing on the ground where it's at a little bit safer level and then from here I've just got to go like 40 50 feet over to my garage to get it stored so it's not as big a deal this is gonna make this a lot safer keep these rear tires planted for me so I'll go ahead and show you what this looks like without the ballast I'll put the ballast box on we'll get these out of the trailer real quick and then I'll give you guys a final walk around and show you how this thing turned out so when I do this I always try to make sure I get my pallet forks all the way into the skid try to get the load as close to me as I can get it which does make a difference how far the weight is out from the pivot pin. But as you can see here, let me idle up. And see how it rocks over on me, tires off the ground. So let's go ahead and get the ballast on here now and we'll see what the difference is. All right. See if we can get this 
thing on there. I can already tell you now, my next big investment's gonna be in a speed hitch. Ugh. So I have to manhandle a 600 pound box. We'll get her. There's one. So now, with 610 pounds of ballast on the back, let's go ahead and get this in here. Idle up. I'd say I'm just a little bit more planted. Wow, that makes a heck of a difference. So that pallet there was 2,000 pounds. This pallet here is only going to be... 250 pounds less so this would be uh, 1750 pounds is what this one will be so it should be a little bit easier but nonetheless that is the easiest pallet of feed I have ever moved golly that makes a heck of a difference Okay, let's go ahead and get this video finished out real quick. So as you saw when I was unloading those pallets of feed, that makes a pretty big difference of having a 600 pounds on the back of the tractor versus having nothing at all. Now the nice thing about this and the way I designed it and built it was, as I told you at the beginning of the video, I bought a bunch of those little plates that I used inside this box. So I still got 10 more extras as well. And the whole game plan all along was to be able to take those and use them as weights that I could add to this box if I ever need to add extra weight to this. Because in all honesty, I still got 190 pounds before I reach the capacity that this box is rated at. And then the other nice thing is I can still use those plates as well in the winter in the bed of my truck for extra weight when I've got the plow hooked up. So something else I mentioned earlier in the, in the video, if you don't remember, was that I had a couple bolts down here in these PVC pipes that I was using to hold these in place. So now I'm going to go ahead and go grab those bolts real quick and that'll give me a drain hole in the bottom of both of those. So there's one and there is two. So I got those out now. So now I've got drain holes in these all the way around. Now I went ahead and threw some tools on this thing just to kind of give you an idea of what this thing might look like when I'm out and about using it. Nine times out of 10 when I'm out in the pasture working on anything, I'm probably gonna need a shovel, a rake. I threw this little reader on here just for sake of example, but in all honesty, I'd probably have a spade on here, on this side here. And what's nice about these little mounts I picked up and mounted on the side of this box is anything that's got like an actual handle on the end of it that wouldn't be able to go down to my pipe, I could in theory store on the back of the box here as well. So it's just one little added extra feature that I wanted to go ahead and add on this thing that I thought would be kind of neat. I still got room inside my box here that I could throw some chains or I could throw uh, like the saw or something like that up there as well. Now this is the part that I thought was really cool and I showed you guys at the beginning. So let me show you the finished product on this little storage box down here. Now this obviously is not gonna be weatherproof because of the cracks right here. So water would run down and get in that in theory. I am gonna throw drill a couple holes in the bottom of that just to help get water out as well. If tilted up but go ahead and take this access door off like so get it to where i can get my stuff out of here and as you can see i've already got some things stored in there so i thought i'd keep a little three pound mallet in there as well and here's that little milwaukee pack out box that i put in here as well get that dude out of here like i said it's a little bit of a tight fit but i think it'll be all right now this is gonna be something that probably is gonna evolve and change over time but for now i went ahead and just threw in like in the middle of the compartment here i went ahead through like some adjustable wrenches screwdrivers tape utility knife uh, a pair of side cuts things of that nature i've got some of my little insulators that i tend to use for quite a bit i've got uh, various hose fittings repair kits in here seems like i've always got an end popping off a hose so I, that's something i always like to have on me a couple extra little tractor parts i've got some pins and a little shackle, a couple of cotter pins, and then I've got my fence supplies here. I got my little crimping sleeves here if the fence ever needs a repair, and some staples in here as well. And as I said, I'm probably gonna end up adding to this as I go. This is just what I could think of offhand to put in here just to get me going for now. But other than that, that's all I've got for you. I think it turned out pretty nice. You'll have to let me know down in the comments how I did and what you think of the variation that I decided to go with. I think it's gonna serve my purpose just fine. There's obviously a hundred different ways you can do this. This is just my take on the box. We'll see if it evolves from here. Other than that, that's all I've got for you on this one. I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch if you stuck with me till the end. That's all I've got on my chore list for the night. I'm gonna go ahead and get in the house, get some dinner, catch a shower, and I'm gonna sit my butt down for the evening. Appreciate you guys taking the time to watch. We'll catch you guys on the next one.